Good evening, and welcome to Sacred Heart University. My name is Rob Gilmore, and I'm the Director of Campus Experience in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. It's our pleasure to be with you tonight as we talk about the Jack Welsh College of Business and Technology and the School of Computer Science and Engineering here at the University. From all of us here at the University to all of you who have been accepted to the Sacred Heart Class of 2024, we congratulate you. And in this era of when we're going to be able to communicate with you virtually, we are excited to be with you tonight. We're going to ask that you send as many questions in as possible during our chat as we talk to members of the staff and faculty of the Jack Welsh College of Business and Technology. We're going to try to get through as many questions as we can during the evening. However, we also know that we're not going to be able to get to all of your questions. The questions that we aren't able to get to tonight, we will collect and we will answer them and put them out in a digital format so that you'll be able to use uh, the information from those questions to help you make a decision on coming to Sacred Heart University. During tonight, we are going to be following CDC guidelines and keeping a safe distance of just about six feet away from each other so that we are practicing uh, safe social distancing in this new era that we are currently living in. But other than that, we are excited to be with you tonight. This is going to be a great night for, to give you as much information as possible. And to start us off, it is my pleasure to welcome the Dean of the Jack Walsh College of Business and Technology here at Sacred Heart University, Dr. Martha Crawford. Good evening, Dr. Crawford. How are you? Good evening, Rob. Uh, so to start us off, can you uh, first uh, extend a welcome to our admitted students as well as talk a little bit about the role of the Welsh College of Business and Technology here at Sacred Heart? Yes, thank you. Yes, well, welcome to the Welsh College of Business and Technology. I'm thrilled uh, to have this opportunity to engage with you. I would have much rather uh, been in a position to welcome you to campus uh, next weekend, but uh, this, is the this is the next best. This is what we can do right now. Uh, so I do look forward to welcoming you to campus. I think what's important to know about the Welsh College of Business and Technology is that we're laser focused on preparing you for your first job, but over and above that for lifelong learning. So while the uh, Sacred Heart University is a liberal arts school, we also are very focused on making sure that you have the skills and the competencies that are gonna help you get your first job. And m more than that, giving you also a, an attitude, an entrepreneurial toolkit, if you will, to approach problems and keep learning as you go. You're gonna have longer and longer careers, and we, our job is to help prepare you, not, not just for your first job, but for a very successful and long career after that. Uh, you uh, came on to the university staff back uh, this past fall. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, previously had come to us from uh, Harvard University. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about why Sacred Heart attracted you uh, to uh, continue your advancement in academics? Yeah, sure. Uh, so yes, I left the faculty of Harvard Business School to come here, but before joining Harvard Business School, I was there for three years on the faculty. Before joining HBS, I was in industry for 20 years, and I worked as a senior vice president uh, at the global level responsible for research and development for three multinational corporations. I was based in Paris. Uh, so I have really spent my life at the frontier, my whole career has been at the, career, at the frontier of technology and business. So for me, uh, this is very right-minded to say, you know what, in the world we're living in, technology, and in particular digital technology, is not a disruptor, it's a restructuring agent. It has completely changed the way we do business, and that's not only true for business people, it's also true for any kind of technical uh, specialist who wants to work in the business world. Now, a few years ago, the university's uh, College of Business incorporated the idea of technology into the overall structure of the college. So talk a little bit about what transpired in making that decision and where our students are headed now with their preparedness within the Jack Walsh College of Business and Technology. Right, so, so one of the things that really attracted me was that the School of Computer Science and Engineering had been already merged into the College of Business when I was contacted by Sacred Heart. And I was fine, you know, at HBS, very happy. And uh, when the headhunter explained this to me, though, I was really, you know, seduced by the idea because I thought, ah, you know, they get it. And not only do they get it, because a lot of universities get it, they talk about technology and business, but they had done it. They had put the two together. And so it made perfect sense to me, someone with a PhD in engineering and an MBA who has spent a career doing, you know, actually pushing the envelope of innovation in business to, to help, you know, prepare the next generation. Uh, so I, I thought that was really, really important. And I think we're doing that systematically. What we're doing since I came in mm -hmm. is we are injecting analytics and technology into all four of our uh, business um, concentrations. We have accounting, we have management, marketing, and economics and finance. 
but also on our, on our tech side, we have computer science and engineering. We're making sure that those folks are trained to function in a business environment and have some sense. So basically the, the idea is to graduate business leaders who are technologically savvy and technologists who are bus business savvy. Okay. Um, one of the things that um, has transpired over the last few years um, in the College of Business Technology uh, is the development of West Campus. Uh, and for those of you who may have not been to campus yet, uh, West Campus is located uh, just about a quarter mile off of the main campus here in Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, that was General Electric's global headquarters for a few decades before they moved to Boston in 2016. That's when we purchased it. And over the last few years, we've begun to redevelop the area uh, including opening up brand new space this past year for the Welsh College of Business Technology and the School of Computer Science and Engineering. Can you talk a little bit about how that space is being transformed and how our students will be using it? So it's phenomenal. Uh, it is truly phenomenal. Uh, I, you know, my son just graduated from an Ivy League school and comes down here and is like, oh my God, do these students even know what they have? It's amazing. Yeah. He's like, this is insane. We didn't have anything like this. Uh, basically what we've done is we've converted the former global headquarters of GE into an innovation campus. And we have a number of labs there. So they're teaching labs, okay? It's not research labs. So we have a finance and compute, you know, financial computing lab that looks a lot like it would look when you go and you work on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be learning finance in that environment. We have an artificial intelligence lab, which is used by our gaming majors, but it's also used by our accounting majors to learn about machine learning, big data. Uh, we, we have a cybersecurity lab where, you know, I mean, every thing, single aspect of digital innovation is completely integrated into, but in a hands-on hands way. We're very into experiential learning. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the theory, it's really learning by doing. Okay. Um, my last question for you uh, today is, uh, where is your vision for the College of um, bi uh, Business and Technology, and where do these students that are coming in for the class of 2024 fall within that vision? Well, I think we are putting an increasing accent on entrepreneurship, and when I say entrepreneurship, I don't mean that if, if you graduate from the WCBT, you're automatically going to go create a business. What I mean is you're going to come out of the WCBT, not only with that liberal arts view of being able to see the bigger context, but you're going to be, you know, completely relevant, plug and play relevant in the business world, mm -hmm. um, and I, I think you're going to have an attitude, a can-do attitude. That's what I call the entrepreneurial toolkit. It's not just, you know, oh, I need, I know how to create a company. It's even if you're in a large company, it's a, it's a, it's an attitude of, okay, there's an issue. How do we break that down? Use critical thinking to make it into little bits that we can deal with. And how do we work in as a group? We work a lot on project-based learning, experiential learning in groups. That's very relevant in the working yeah. world. So, I mean, I, I think that's where we're going. We're putting a lot more emphasis. We have the iHub, which is a, a co-working space that we created with Verizon. We have the Idea Lab, which is open to all of our business majors. I think you'll hear about that a little bit later. You know, whether you're in fashion merchandising or, you know, you're learning about drones, you can, you can do prototyping in the Idea Lab, and then you can create a company or you can work with real startups up in the iHub. It's an amazing, amazing setup, and I think it's a unique learning environment that we're trying to leverage fully, not only for Sacred Heart, but we're actually opening it up to students from the entire ecosystem of Connecticut-based universities because it's such an incredible resource. So you, in closing, you would say that the Welsh College of Business Technology at Sacred Heart is uh, beginning to be one of the leaders in applying business and technology absolutely. to the students. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's where we're going in the next five years. Yeah. And I think this, this entering class has a really important role to play in, in, in you know, bringing that up. All We're right. going to operationalize it. Very great. Uh, very nice to have you here tonight. Oh, uh, and uh, I know uh, Dean Crawford looks forward to meeting with you, uh, many of you at orientation over the summer, Absolutely. and then certainly when classes start uh, this fall. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Thank Crawford. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Thank you. Uh, to talk to uh, you and welcome you f uh, uh, from our undergraduate admissions office, I want to bring in uh, Pamela Pillow. Uh, Pam is our executive director of undergraduate admissions at Sacred Heart University. She is a two-time graduate of Sacred Heart, both from the Welsh College of Business and Technology. That's correct. Uh, she is um, one of my fellow alumnuses from the class of 2007 here. Very good year. Um, you could see that age does not affect people equally. <laughs> um, but we are here tonight to uh, welcome you on behalf of our staff, uh, who has worked diligently over the last few months 
and getting you to this point of acceptance here at the university. So That's why don't you welcome our uh, I, viewers tonight. I would love to. Um, thank you, Rob, and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight virtually. We are happy to be coming to you live from the Martiri Center here at Sacred Heart University. We have had a tremendous applicant pool here um, this year for the class of 2024, and you are among the best and brightest. We had almost 12,000 applications this year, and of our admitted students, you boast an average GPA of a 3.5. You have test scores of at least a 1210 or higher. Um, we have received applications from across 23 states and 10 countries. So um, we are just so honored that you are here with us tonight with your families tuning in, um, and we're happy to have you. Um, what is uh, the next steps uh, for the students uh, over the next couple weeks? And I know one of the questions that we're going to be getting a lot tonight is, uh, have we transferred our May 1st deadline uh, with everything that's been going on recently? Well, this is obviously a rapidly changing situation that we are living in right now. Uh, we are closely monitoring this at the university. Currently, our deposit deadline is May 1. So we are um, delivering content to you. We, are, we will be in touch with you. Our admission counselors will be in touch with you regularly over the next several weeks. Um, we do hope to invite you to campus, hopefully before May 1, um, but we will, we will monitor this situation. But please keep an eye out for your counselors calling, texting you, emailing you. We will be in close communication with you um, with other opportunities virtually to connect with us, learn more about our majors, um, but even talk one-on-one -on -one to answer any questions you might have, including those pertaining to financial aid. Okay. Now, as we mentioned when you first came up, is that you're a two-time uh, alum right. of the, of the uh, Welsh College of Business and Technology. Uh, let's first start with your uh, undergrad experience. So you were a sport uh, management major. That's correct. Uh, talk a little bit about your experience within that program. Um, uh, and I know, it, granted, it was a couple of years ago. It wasn't while, yesterday. That's okay. But how did that program prepare you to uh, your career um, in um, data and also uh, admissions? In business, yeah. So uh, I, I, I was actually a varsity athlete here as well. I played tennis on the tennis team, which uh, sort of complemented my interest in sports as, as an industry. I basically learned business principles through sports, which was something I loved and enjoyed. It was a passion of mine. Maybe it is for many of you as well. So it's, it's a great major. We're going to hear more from the chair of the department there. Um, lots of opportunities for internships, hands-on experience, which I definitely took advantage of when I was a student here. Um, current topics that are always discussed in class so that you're ahead of all the timely issues. And recently you just completed your master's degree from the Walsh College of Business Technology. Talk about uh, the experience uh, in the graduate program because many of the students that are out there today are also looking for a grad program within business and technology. So uh, what would you give them on advice from your experience? So recently I completed the Master in Business Administration, the MBA program, but we offer a number of graduate programs here in the Welch College of Business and across the institution. So students are able to complete their bachelor's degree and seamlessly transition into one of our graduate programs and completing both degrees often in five years. I did not do that. I ended up going back for my MBA a little bit later in my career. Um, but again, the MBA uh, incorporates a lot of teamwork, hands-on work, um, learning all the various functions of business and putting it all together, um, obviously helping us deal with issues just like we're dealing with today, with uh, quickly responding to what's going on in a timely manner and being able to uh, deliver content to you um, in a different way. All right. Uh, so we're going to say goodbye to Pam for just a little bit. She'll come back with us as we wrap up a little later on uh, to answer your questions. Thank, Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Welcome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to invite uh, faculty members from the different areas of the College of Business and Technology. Uh, we're going to give them a few minutes to talk about their programs, and then we're going to answer your questions specifically for these programs. So once you see your program of interest, uh, come on up. Uh, feel free to ask the questions, and we will get through as many as we can. Like I said at the beginning, we're not going to get through all the questions tonight, but we will provide answers to all the questions that were asked in the coming days to get all this information to you. As Pam said uh, just a few moments ago, she was a, a sport management major here at the university. Uh, so we're going to bring back one of her faculty members uh, that she worked with at the undergraduate level. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Joshua Stewart, uh, Stewart who uh, is a uh, faculty member within uh, the sport management major. Josh, how Thank are you? you? Thank you, Ron. Nice to have you Hello, here. Hello, everyone. All right. So uh, first of all, can you talk a little bit about uh, an overview of the sport management program here at Sacred Heart? Sure. The program was launched in uh, 1999, so we're a mature program. Yeah. Uh, we have a major. We have a minor. This fall, we're starting an exciting minor in eSports. 
which uh, I think will we'll, uh, do really well. Yeah. Um, we have about 100, 150 students in our, in our classes. Okay. Um, we're we small, still small, you know, 20, 25 students per class. Uh, I think the two main uh, things about our, our program that are really impressive are the faculty and the location. Uh, the location we can't do much about, we're here, um, but it is a great bonus for us. Uh, we're in the hotbed of Western Connecticut, uh, which puts us near all the major agencies. Mm -hmm. We're a hop, skip, and a jump from New York City, so that gets us near all the major New York uh, sports teams, all the league offices, uh, some of the other agencies, marketing uh, companies, and we've placed students at all of those. Uh, and then we've also placed everywhere in the tri-state area, okay. Massachusetts. Um, so I think the location is, you know, it's a built-in uh, great advantage for, for us. us yeah. And um, as far as the faculty goes, uh, we have over 50 years experience among our full-time faculty. And that's just you? Uh, that's, yeah. no, um, <laughs> if, you, if you count Pam in there. <laughs> just, no. But our full-time faculty have over 50 years of uh, uh, teaching experience. Uh, we have impressive adjuncts, including um, a VP from ESPN who teaches a course for us. We have a professional sports uh, agent who teaches for us. So it's a nice mix of the full-time faculty uh, and uh, you know impressive adjuncts. Uh, uh, what is the uh, experience for a student within sports management at the undergrad level? So what types of courses are they taking uh, and what is the uh, preparedness getting them ready for their bachelor's degree? So it's an intensive business degree and it's built off of the business core so the students will start, all students in the College of Business will start by taking the business core, mm -hmm. management, marketing, finance, accounting, uh, economics, and all of our students will take that as well. Uh, which makes uh, makes it very easy to do a double major within business because you do the do the core one time and and you can actually get into a second major, okay. uh, and then our major actually builds off of all those things. So we have courses in sport marketing, sport media, sport finance, um, sport law, a lot of the things that you've learned a little bit about. Now you're getting very specific uh, information on that. Okay, a uh, couple questions that are coming in here. Um, what are some uh, internships available for students within sport management? And then uh, second part of that is what are some of the uh, job placements uh, that students have gotten out of sport management? Well, very conveniently, I just put together a list uh, recently right. yes. um, of our placements, both un uh, interns and full-time. Okay. Um, so just in terms of the, the general areas, um, we have base, uh, MLB, uh, NFL, MLS, NHL, NBA, all the networks, uh, agencies, venues, minor league sports, uh, college sports, uh, entertainment things like Globetrotters, okay. WWE, uh, live events, and you know everything else uh, through that. And, and we the, place a, every you name a team, you know within two three hundred miles, we place them. And when is it uh, advised for students within sport management to take on um, their internship? And just so you know that every student within the Welsh College of Business Technology must perform yeah. an internship during their their time as an undergrad. So what would be one of the areas or the time frame for that first internship that they can do? So you can get, we want people to be involved from day one, mm -hmm. get some kind of experience. Uh, most places will not hire you as a freshman. So I kind of say that. Okay. Um, so anywhere from that point on, uh, sophomore, junior, senior year, uh, preferably before the senior year. So we, we try to push them, uh, hopefully to the sophomore, junior year to do that. Uh, because the junior year, or senior year then, they're looking for their, their actual jobs. Okay. Um, and then for students that are interested in sport management, but also want to attain a graduate degree. Uh, from Sacred Heart, what would be the track? What are the options available for graduate programs for sport management? Uh, so there's there's a couple different ways. Um, you do have a nice basis for business. So a lot of those business uh, area, digital marketing, we've had students go into that. Uh, we've had students go into the accounting program, uh, and then over here we have um, the sport communication program as well. Yeah. We work tightly with them both in the undergraduate level and um, because they do a completely different thing than we do. Uh, we, we also recommend them highly for, for that, so you get a full scope of the sports industry. Okay, uh, and then the last question that we uh, came in, uh, that's come in about sport management is, uh, what is the availability of faculty uh, within the sport management program? What do you mean by availability? Availability, when, how long, how often can students oh. be with their faculty? Oh, whenever, yeah. Yeah, whenever. Okay. We, love our, we love our students. All right, very good. Yeah, we love to see them, and uh, we have offices, we want them to come in, and uh, we're very accessible. All right. Hopefully we see some of them in the fall. All right. Uh, representing the uh, Sport Management Program here at Sacred Heart, Dr. Uh, Joshua Stewart. Uh, Stewart. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Doc. All right. Uh, keeping in the area of management, I'd like to introduce uh, one of our uh, professors within the management program itself, uh, Professor uh, Tony Makari. He's going to come on up.
How are we doing tonight? Good. How are you? We're good. I'm good. Hi, everybody. So uh, we already talked to one uh, entity within the management program, being sport management. Uh, let's talk about the overall program uh, designed for management. Can you take a little bit of an overview of that sure. and what the experience is at the undergraduate level? Sure. So think about it. When you uh, remember what Dean Crawford had to say about we try to prepare you for both your first job and the rest of your career. Think about management as preparing you for the rest of your career. Um, you know, the idea is basically you can have a certain level of technical skills, but the further up you go, you have to be able to manage people, you have to be able to manage a process, you have to be able to work with teams, and you have to be able to create uh, positive win-win scenarios. So the department of management, very often students will do one of two things. They'll, have a, they'll use it as a double major, or uh, they use it as a springboard potentially for uh, a graduate program. One of the things we're working on now is we're focusing on the first job as well as the later jobs. So right now the, the minors or the focuses, concentrations, if you will, within the Department of Management are small business and family business management, entrepreneurship, uh, which ties nicely with the whole uh, link between business and technology. Uh, human resources is another area that a lot of management students go into. And we've created two new minors because there's a lot of positions op uh, in you know just the reality of supply chain management. Think about supply chain back in my day. I know most people think I'm about 25, but I'm actually a little older than that. <laughs> people in supply chain just went out and negotiated prices. Now think about what's going on today with, with the uh, coronavirus. Supply chains are this huge integrated system where every department in a company's got to come together to work together. And so it's really become a completely separate function. So we're going to launch a, a supply chain minor in the fall, and then the fourth minor is sales management. If you look probably, you know, the two places where there's the most jobs are, you know, accounting, finance, and, you know, management's probably tied right in there. So that's that's where, we're, where we are. All right, so uh, talking a little bit about um, the undergrad experience again, uh, what are some areas that students can do internships? Um, and then also where, again, are, is the job placement availability once students graduate? Sure, so I would say probably about 20% of the management students will take on some sort of a sales or business development role in an internship and then again later on when they graduate. HR is probably human resources and human resources related functions such as corporate responsibility, um, diversity and inclusion, that's probably another 20 to 30 percent. Most of our students come from this region, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, uh, and it really depends on where your interest is. We have students who work for, you know, the Etnas of the world, the larger companies, um, and then we also have students who will go to smaller, uh, smaller businesses because that's where their, uh, their interests lie. Okay. Uh, what is um, the graduate track if a student wants to get a uh, master's after completing a bachelor's in management? Sure. Um, the MBA uh, is probably the best fit with the management department because of you know, the, the nature of the MBA program. It's really about managing teams, process, strategic thinking. So we have a five-year program here where basically you could come directly out of your undergrad experience and then um, uh, take your MBA. Uh, so that's, you know, a lot of students will do that. And basically we try to make it very seamless um, if you graduate with a 3.2 undergrad from here, you don't have to take a GMAT test and you're, uh, you're basically uh, going to get into the program because we want to keep you here and help you complete your studies so that when you graduate, you know, kind of that lifelong learning concept, hopefully that's what we've prepared you for. Good. And then the last question um, that uh, just came in, uh, I believe it's from a parent is can you talk a little bit about the faculty background of mm -hmm. professors within management? Sure. So my, uh, 30 seconds about my background. I'm really a financial guy and a lawyer by trade. I did merger and acquisition work for about 20 years and uh, planning and analysis. I was the guy who wrote the strategy document and then later on did mergers and acquisitions. Um, I would say probably about half the faculty have a background like mine. I got into education as a second, uh, sort of a second stage in life. Uh, I'm not a researcher, I'm basically a teacher, and I also uh, run the academic side of the MBA program. But we have faculty members who are much more into research, much more into uh, theoretical practice, 
So it's, it's a nice combination. And I think the other thing to just sort of echo what Josh said, you know, um, this is what the people who are here, this is what they want to do. This is not a stepping stone to going to a bigger college. As Josh said, you can walk down the hallway, everybody's office door is there. Um, I have students who had me five, six, seven years ago who still contact me for career advice, personal, you know, personal issues. Um, and that's, you know, that's why we're here. That's why people like me are here because that's what we want to do. It's not, it's not a stepping stone to the next thing. And with everything going on between all the investment, it's a great place to be and hopefully I'll see you here. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Makari, representing the management program here at Sacred Heart. A few years ago, the university uh, launched a new program, which has uh, slowly started to accelerate over the last few years. Uh, and it's uh, a hybrid program here, and it's um, a, uh, really an excellent opportunity for students uh, who want to get a uh, degree in uh, an industry uh, from hospitality, resort, and tourism management. So I'd like to bring up uh, Kirsten Tripoldi, uh, representing uh, the hospitality program here at Sacred Heart. Good evening, how are you? Good evening, I'm well. Uh, so we're gonna go through the same thing again, talk a little bit about the overview of the program uh, and uh, what the experience is at the undergraduate level. Excellent. So, hi, it's my pleasure to welcome, to welcome you and to congratulate you on your acceptance. Also, to represent the Hospitality Resort and Tourism Program at Sacred Heart. Uh, it's an exciting program. Uh, we have, uh, it's the largest growing sector of the economy worldwide and uh, domestically. And uh, we are very excited. We've got some cool things going on. We've got incredible facilities. If you've been to campus, you've seen them. If you haven't, I encourage you to come on a virtual tour or to contact me, and I'll be happy to do that with you. Okay. So uh, let's talk about the three components. So uh, hospitality, then resort, and then tourism. Mm -hmm. um, we are one of the few schools that offer um, hands-on placement for each of those areas, correct? Absolutely. So there are placement opportunities for internships and for permanent jobs in hospitality. We have uh, partners that are you know, in the hotel industry. So Hyatt and Hilton and Marriott have been to campus. They've uh, been uh, hosted tours for us. Uh, even locally, uh, RMS companies, which is Randy Salvatore, he's a, a hotel developer. He has eight different hotels that are located here on the Connecticut Gold Coast. So we are fortunate, as Dr. Short said, to be in between Boston and New York City and to have the accessibility of Connecticut's Gold Coast. We also have a great deal of uh, private club mm -hmm. placements. Uh, there's a country club. If you threw a rock from here, you'd hit a country club. Yep. Uh, and <laughs> including our own, which is exactly. a Great River Golf Course, which exactly. we acquired a few years ago. Which and our students have the ability to work there, correct? Absolutely. And it's included in our curriculum. So yep. we have a private club class, and the students go to the club quite a few times. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the club managers from the various clubs in New Jersey, New York, and uh, Connecticut come to cam campus as well to visit with the students. Um, talking about um, the uh, tourism part, uh, we have, um, and we'll get into some of the study abroad options later, but you know, Sacred Heart owns its own campus in Dingle, Ireland, mm -hmm. uh, and talk a little bit about how we incorporate the Dingle campus into the tourism aspect of the major. So we just, this semester, we just sent our first cohort of students. We sent six students to Dingle, Ireland to study tourism with tourism professionals in Dingle. Uh, they are also our professors. Uh, the students had an incredible opportunity and they really, they enjoyed every second of it. Dingle is a, a premier tourist destination on the west coast of Ireland, actually as close as you can get to Maine without getting wet. <laughs> um, the, uh, you mentioned at the beginning that this is a, a growing area for um, employment in the United States. Talk about some of those areas that students can anticipate going into with a degree uh, in hospitality, resort, and tourism management. So in addition to what you would ordinarily think of, you would think probably of a private club or of a restaurant or a hotel. In addition to that, there's a lot of uh, opportunity now growing in elder care and health care. Uh, hotel hospitals are hiring hospitality professionals to make the service better, mm -hmm. uh, to in increase the, uh, the customer service scores. Uh, also, um, like our iHub that's here on campus, uh, shared office spaces are becoming very exciting. There's a company called Convene that does shared office spaces and they also do um, catering and events okay. simultaneously. So there's an awful lot of opportunity. In hospitality, we have opportunity for everyone and we're so broad that there really is no limit. 
Now, one of the things that uh, started this past year, and you know, forgive me, I'm a foodie, as you can tell, <laughs> um, is we started um, a uh, food uh, course mm -hmm. um, that our students are involved in. Talk a little bit about that hands-on experience. So Chef Xavier LaRue is our master chef. He is fabulous. He was at the Culinary Institute of America, which is a competitor, mm -hmm. for uh, 20 years before and teaching the introductory class. Before that, he was at Le Cote Basque and Le Grand Oui in New York City. So he's the real deal. Uh, we are very excited to have him. He uh, runs six sessions with the students. They learn uh, some real classic cooking mm -hmm. with him. And, um, and then the other half of that class is an industry certification. Okay. So included in the curriculum, are, there are two internships. There are also five industry certifications, which uh, a manager would get in the real world. Uh, but you will leave here with those industry certifications in your pocket ready to go. OK. Um, a question that came in, um, is there an opportunity to double major um, on the course uh, load that you're already taking for um, hospitality, resort, and tourism management? So double majors, the, the curriculum is very full, chock full, so we can teach you everything that we need to teach you. Um, for most students, I would suggest a master's degree rather than a double major. Okay, so, so going on to a, another master's in an, in an area versus? A local, in a related area. Okay, yeah. all right. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Thanks for Kirsten Tripoldi from the uh, Hospitality, Resort, and Tourism Management Program here at Sacred Heart. Uh, we're going to get next into uh, one of the larger areas for uh, the business uh, and one of the more uh, innovative uh, programs, even though all of our programs are innovative, is our finance program. Uh, so I'd like to bring up Dr. Bridget Lyons. Uh, she is uh, one of the uh, faculty members within the uh, finance department here in the Welsh College of Business and Technology. Bridget, how are you? I'm great. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Um, so quickly, uh, once you go over the, um, the program of finance here at Sacred Heart and what students can expect in the experience here. Okay, first I'd like to welcome everybody, congratulate you. I hope to be seeing some of you in a finance class soon. All right. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the program. So the finance and economics programs have a great reputation in the market here. So we have great placements for our interns and our graduates. We have a major in finance a major in business economics, we recently launched a minor in financial analytics, okay. which is really going well. I would say in terms of the program, we're very hands-on. So a lot of it is about problem solving and getting your skills. Okay. So students who come here can expect that from day one, they're going to be solving something. They're going to be learning to use Excel. They're going to be learning to use a Bloomberg terminal. They're not going to be sitting and just listening to us. So I think that's one of the main strengths of the program. Okay. Um, you know, earlier when we were talking with uh, Dean Crawford, we were mentioning about West Campus and the space that we have down there. And part of that space when we opened it up this past fall was a brand new uh, finance lab, uh, which our students yeah. get to use and complete with over a dozen uh, Bloomberg terminals. Uh, can you talk a little about the space that's down there? Yeah, this is incredible. As the Dean mentioned, people come here who work in the business and they go crazy. So we have had the opportunity to have folks from Goldman visit every year and meet with our students. And the first year they came, we had a similar lab, not quite as good, but pretty good, over in Martiri. And the first year they came, it was a number of people I have worked with at Goldman Sachs, and they were absolutely astounded by our facilities. So it's a great pleasure. I get to teach in the finance lab all the time. It's great. We have Bloomberg terminals in the lab and also outside of the lab. So what this means is that when you get to interview for a position, or when you hit a desk somewhere, you're really comfortable. So as I thought about coming here tonight, I talked to a couple students. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of feedback for having close relations with the students, absolutely true. As we're going through these times that are challenging, I've reached out to all of the students in my classes and also all my advisees to make sure that things were going okay, that they were settling in to working in an online format. Okay. And uh, I gave all of them my cell phone and said, hey, if you wanna talk about it, let me know. So I was able to talk to a couple of the seniors who were worried about their internships mm -hmm. because many of them are no longer interning and they want to make sure that they get the credits. And uh, of course I assured them that everything would work out, but as part of the call I said, hey, well, I'm going to be talking to some prospective students, what would you tell them? Okay. And so they said, first of all, the program is really great because it prepared them. So anyone who's interning really felt that when they hit their desk, that they had the skills, whether it was Excel or using Bloomberg or knowledge, that they were really well prepared for it. They also felt that the close interactions with the faculty, many of whom have had 
lots of years of experience, as Tony was talking about, in corporations or banks, that that was a real selling point, and that they felt that the credentialing that we give takes them a long way. So if you're a finance major, as part of the finance program, you'll get a Microsoft certification in Excel. We build it into the program. You'll also get a certification from Bloomberg, okay. and the economics majors all get certified in an economics package that I'm blanking on. Okay, but that, th those certifications are already putting them in an advantage once they have received their bachelor's degree for uh, job interviews and selection for positions once they graduate, correct? Yeah, it's gone very well. There's a large hedge fund in the area that started recruiting here a couple of years ago, and now they come every year. They're really happy with our students. The skills are really good. We also get very good feedback on teamwork. So as a College of Business and Technology, we emphasize the technical skills, but we also emphasize the ability to work in teams, which is really valued in the market. And so that feedback is very strong. And finally, which is really interesting based on what we're going through right now, I've gotten great feedback from supervisors of our interns on their ability to adapt. And I think this week we're hearing more and more about adaptability. Yeah, adaptability, so yes. Playing well. Um, uh, one of the questions that came in is talk a little bit about the um, undergrad to grad portion. So what uh, master's degrees are available for our students uh, in the finance or economics field? Yeah, that's a great question. We have a number of students who go straight through and we have lots of options. Tony, I think, talked a lot about the MBA program. So we have an MBA program that some of our students go into, but you have a choice of doing it here or going to Luxembourg. And Luxembourg is a nice option that a few of That's my That's one of our other campuses have. that we own. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And what's great about the MBA in Luxembourg is that built into that program is a six-month internship. Okay. So the students who have gone through, most of them will have two internships here as finance or economics majors. They then went over there and did a six-month internship at a company there. So that's great. We launched about five years ago a master's in finance and investment management. Um, that's also a very strong program. It tends to be more quantitative than the MBA. Okay. But if you were interested in risk management, you like math and statistics, that's a great program, very marketable. We've built in a lot of analytics and something called Python, for those of you who like coding, <laughs> built into that program, really selling very well right now. Okay. Um, so there's lots of opportunities. Most recently, we started a program in business analytics. And yes. some of the finance and econ majors are also going into that. Again, highly marketable these days. Okay, and the last question that comes in is, what is the number one career most students in finance end up taking once they graduate? Oh, that's a great question. So if I speak about it broadly, I would say that most students are taking a role as an analyst. That analyst role might be at a hedge fund, it might be at a commercial bank, an investment bank, or a company. But I would say the number one role is some sort of position that would be called a financial analyst. Close behind advising. Financial advising, there's a tremendous demand for younger advisors, and a number of students have been headed that way. Although, uh, kind of a volatile week, yeah, we right. may be scaring yeah. some of them off. Uh, off. So. Uh, so I appreciate you spending some time. My last question to you is talk, just for a few moments, talk about your background uh, in your profession uh, and um, uh, you know, adaptability to uh, now teaching um, all these years. Yeah, thanks. So it's my great pleasure to teach, but it's not where I started. So what you'll hear is a common story. You heard it from the dean and from Tony. A lot of the faculty have had other careers first. So I started out in banking, did that for a while, did a bit of consulting, went back and got into graduate school and more on the academic side. But I still kind of keep my feet in both worlds. Mm -hmm. So every summer I go down to Wall Street and I train a lot of new hires at investment banks. So I've worked with JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs for about 15 years. I also do a lot of work with part of World Bank, and that's sort of my passion. So I'm working these days on developing a program that we're going to, if, if we can get there, it's yeah. supposed to be scheduled for next month, we're going to be working with some small and medium-sized businesses in Ethiopia to help them uh, perform better. So it's a nice way of keeping me honest on okay. what I'm teaching in the classroom and also making sure that our students are ready for the job market when they go out. All right, thank you so much. Thanks. Dr. Bridget Lyons from our uh, finance and economics portion of the uh, Welsh College of Business Technology. Next is gonna be our accounting department here at Sacred Heart and I'd like to bring up uh, Dr. Linda Hugan uh, who's gonna talk a little bit about accounting. Good evening, how are you? All right, so we're going to, uh, same drill, uh, have you talk a little bit about the overview program here at uh, Sacred Heart uh, on accounting. Absolutely. So uh, welcome to Sacred Heart, and i um, pleased to talk about the accounting program. Uh, most of our students come in, and their ultimate goal is to become licensed CPAs. So our undergraduate program gives them the foundation. 
uh, the CPA licensure requires 150 credit hours. Okay. So some students can do that in four years, but the majority of them are coming into the undergraduate and um, getting those foundational skills. After completing the undergraduate, many of our students come here for the Masters of Accounting, the MSA program. And between the undergraduate and then the one-year MSA program, they're getting the skills that they need not only to get through the CPA exam, which is a very rigorous exam, but also to be well-trained accountants. Yes. Uh, our students come out of uh, uh, the undergraduate program, many of them with internships with the big four accounting firms. And that's um, probably our biggest point of pride is how well the, the networks that we have with the employers, with the firms, with uh, we really recommend our students um, if they're interested in going into public accounting as their first career. And many of them would like to go to the work for the big four. We have great relationships with them. I spoke to a student this morning who told me he's a junior and he said he has four interviews with the big four firms um, over the next two weeks. So I'm very, very proud of that. We also have good relationships with some of the regional public accounting firms. And the big four are uh, uh, make annual visits to the campus. Absolutely. Uh, through our Center for Career and Professional Development, uh, which allows students to do on-campus interviews with those companies, correct? And not only during that one time of recruiting once a year when they're recruiting for leadership positions, that's what the juniors are going after for the summer after junior year, uh, for internships after their senior year, but they're also coming to career fairs. Uh, we have an accounting career night targeted for sophomores mm -hmm. where we have the big four coming and just telling there are alumni who are a couple years out telling the students what it's like and telling them about the field of accounting. We have um, a senior accounting dinner that the student that the big four come to and network with our students. So it's probably on average about twice a year that the firms are here and the students have opportunities to network with them. Now, it is the season for taxes, uh, and not all the students within accounting are going to go into uh, the area of tax analysis. Uh, can you talk a, a little bit about the special program that we've developed over the last few years that gets students in the community uh, to do uh, tax Absolutely. work? Absolutely. Professor Penise um, has a CPA firm. I, I believe he's just finished, uh, stopped doing that. Um, he's also been teaching with us for 35 years mm -hmm. and doing taxes as well in his own business. And for a long time since he's been here, he's been leading the VITA program, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. And students are not required to take it. Okay. Uh, so they choose to take it as an elective class if they want to. And it's fully hands-on. It's not a typical classroom. They get trained how to do the taxes. And it's a program for low-income individuals. And so many of my students uh, teach intermediate accounting. And so many of my students choose and advisees choose to do that class and come back and tell me that it was the most rewarding experience that they have because it really fulfills Sacred Heart's mission of helping society, of making a difference. It gives them practical experience and it puts together what they're learning in the classroom to their profession. Their profession. Uh, what is uh, some? What are excuse me? Some of the internships available for accounting at the undergrad level? Yeah. So like I said, oh, at the undergraduate level. Yeah. So the big four are doing, and the smaller regional firms are doing the public accounting internships the summer after senior year. Okay. But most students are also doing an internship the summer after their junior year. So many of them will do two. Uh, many of our students, I don't know the exact percentage, are doing internships with the big four. After junior year, the big four are typically not going to consider them just coming out of, out of junior year. That's when the this, many of the students will go home and find uh, CPA firms near them. Sometimes uh, their friends and family uh, will find them internships. And we have a great career services center here and a great network with a lot of um, companies in the area. Students are willing to stay in the area with corporations, being um, an accountant for the corporation. Yes, yeah, certainly. And uh, the, you know, the career piece is a big portion not only for accounting but for all the programs within the College of Business Technology. Um, one of the questions that uh, came in uh, is about the uh, MSA program, the Master of Science in Accounting. Uh, what's the time frame on that as far as the student's plan and um, can they start it any earlier than once they receive their uh, bachelor, so in the fifth year? I don't believe that we st have started early. Uh, 
sometimes if students come in with additional credits from high school, they might finish a semester early, mm -hmm. and so in December of their senior year, they can then start the master's program okay. then. So that's what I would say to somebody who's coming in with quite a few credits and thinking about getting ahead. That's an excellent plan. Uh, the program is one year in length, so t most of the students are starting at the end of August. So the typical plan, this is not for everyone, but for maybe 60-70% of our MSA students, um, they've done their undergraduate, most of them here. They did an internship over the summer, many of them with a big four accounting firm or a public account, another public accounting firm. They start with the MSA program at the end of August, and it is completed the following uh, early August. Okay. So just a little over a year. And during that year, they're taking classes. It's actually in a hybrid format. So we meet one Saturday a month, and the material's also online. Students are, uh, instructors are available online to help with the material, and we are guiding them. Our goal for those students that one year is getting through that CPA exam. We've partnered with Becker CPA Review, okay. and we're giving the students CPA Review material. We're integrating it into our classes, and we want those students that by the time they're committed to their firms in September, after their fifth year, what we think of as the fifth year, that uh, they are done with that exam and fully devoted to their employers. All right, perfect. All right, and uh, once again, this is uh, Dr. Linda Hugan from the Accounting. Thank you so much for being with Thank us you. tonight. All right. Um, and uh, last but not least of our business programs uh, the, uh, this evening before we get to our School of Computer Science and Engineering is our marketing program. So I would like to bring up uh, Michael Frechette, uh, from our uh, marketing area. He's also um, a associate dean? Uh, assistant dean, Assistant right. dean, okay, all right. Uh, so we're gonna talk about a couple things uh, with you tonight, um, uh, Professor Fischette. Uh First of all, let's talk about the marketing program. Sure, yeah. Well, uh, you know, first thing that we like to do when students come in and are marketing majors is to unlock their view of marketing. Usually they have this myopic view that marketing is advertising mm -hmm. and we broaden that over the course of our um, instructions and uh, you know, uh, here in the United States, we are such expert consumers from such a young age, we've been consuming messages from firms that, um, you know, it's, it's understandable that people under, uh, see marketing as advertising. It's that last final message that firms send. But what marketing is, it's, it's actually the discipline that studies how firms connect with, the, with their customer. Okay. And so uh, it is that final message, but it's also the strategy and, and planning that goes into building the product before that. Um, and and ultimately finding a way to, to deliver value to somebody's life. Because if, if I have a product that does that, then obviously Correct. they're going to be the path to my door. So. so within marketing, we have the major of marketing, mm -hmm. uh, but we also have fashion marketing and merchandising. That's right. Uh, and we've also we've gotten uh, several uh, questions tonight about fashion marketing. So we could talk a little bit about that entity. Uh, within the, the uh, program? Yeah, uh, fashion is actually a very popular, um, it's actually a full major and you can also minor in fashion as well so you can have any other business, to, well I guess any other discipline in the university but uh, typically we have other business majors who can either uh, minor in fashion as well. So now this is not, uh, you, you will have design classes for yeah. sure but this is fashion management. Yeah. So this is the business side of fashion. You will take uh, classes on fabrics and uh, design, but you're also going to understand how to run a, a retail business, uh, supply chains, sourcing, all of that type of stuff. So the difference in our fashion program is it's really the business of fashion. Yeah, it's not a design program. Uh, you'll get some of that, but yeah, it's but not fully a design. It's not a design program. Uh, what are some of the internship opportunities uh, within uh, marketing? Yeah, we have, uh, as you've mentioned before, uh, one of the things that I think is a strength of our business school is internships are a requirement of all majors. So everyone who graduates uh, from here is going to have an internship on their resume ready to go. And in marketing, what we're finding is that uh, a lot of people are being hired in, in a kind of a digital marketing function right now. Uh, that corresponds also with the types of jobs we're seeing for graduates is, uh, you know, we're preparing them not only for the, the, the strategy and planning and the theory behind marketing, but firms are turning to them for that, that first and second level of, of uh, marketer who can come in and actually 
um, you know, handle uh, a Hootsuite dashboard to manage, uh, um, you know, social media feeds uh, or all of that type of stuff. What is the, um, just question just came in right here, uh, what are some of the more common jobs uh, that students are getting in the marketing field once yeah, they graduate? Really, just uh, along the same lines of what I just said about the internships, what we're seeing a lot are firms are coming to us, we're getting really good at preparing our graduates to be that um, first or second layer of marketers with a particular digital focus to it, you know. So uh, maybe it's an age thing. Maybe that um, you know uh, people are uh, you know digital natives now coming through our system. So you know, folks at this age uh, are naturally um, technology users. But what we train them do to do is to have the theory behind it, and it's not just post, 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 but it's. Um, who are you talking to, who's your audience, how to segment all of your messaging. And I think a lot of firms are, um, industry, every industry, are looking for uh, the, the younger um, intake of people uh, to handle that role. And so we've responded by you know, really gearing all of our uh, classes um, towards preparing them for that kind of digital future. Right. Uh, moving on to the other area that we wanted to talk to you about tonight, um, one of the, the focuses uh, for the Welsh College of Business is a unique immersion program uh, that we started a few years ago called the Welsh Experience. Mm -hmm. uh, this follows, uh, follows a lot of the model um, that um, the late Jack Welsh wanted to put behind students' uh, preparedness within this program. So can you talk a little bit about what the Welsh Experience program is and how students can begin that process as a freshman? Yeah, the Welsh Experience really is about, uh, it's, it's kind of uh, a mini student life experience, but within the business school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say, it's funny you bring up uh, Mr. Welsh because I think our school in particular carries his vision. You know, he was famous uh, when he was at GE uh, for you know, evaluating all of his performers and at the end of the year cutting the bottom 20%, yeah. right? Whether that was true or not, uh, that's the legend. Yeah. And so what that denotes is he has a real focus on outcomes, that things have to work mm -hmm. and they have to work well and they have to produce. And I think what we do is we create an environment that does that for our students, whether it's freshmen or just about to graduate, even in the graduate school. We prepare you to add value to produce. We're focused on outcomes because we know companies are. And what the Welsh experience does is it, it continues what you're getting uh, from the classroom outside the classroom. It is giving you things like, um, whether it's uh, speakers on campus, corporate visits off campus, we have a pseudo um, corporate structure within this department that actually pulls in uh, students and gives them roles. We have, we have a hospitality team, we have a marketing team, we have a, a, an accounting team that is responsible for doing all those functions for business school activities okay. and events. So um, we also have um, uh, scholarships uh, available. So moms and dads, if you're out there, definitely have your uh, students uh, get in touch with the Welsh experience because there's uh, scholarships to be had for roles to play. And all of this is, is great out of the class experience, all focused on that, I guess, Jack Welsh uh, vision of, of, you know, performing and adding value. Um, and then the last thing I just want to talk to you about very quickly is um, you were talking about corporate structure. Um, talk a little bit about the incubator program here at Sacred Heart and uh, how students are getting involved with that and helping them prepare for the career. Yep, uh, we started out, uh, somebody had mentioned innovation as well before yeah. and uh, you know the merging of uh, business and technology. We also have uh, a couple of places within the School College of Business and Technology where if students have ideas, we have the, the resources and talent to help foster that. In particular, we have a, we have a student-run business incubator that offers um, uh, certainly office space, uh, but also um, talent. Uh, experts are on hand to um, offer their services, whether it's just ideas or looking over business plans or helping to source uh, seed money. Mm -hmm. Um, or giving seed money. I mean, we, we have a lot of, uh, you know, folks, not just our executive in residence, but just come walk through our halls. You're going to see folks who are quite successful walking around 
you know, this uh, area of the world in Metro New York uh, has a lot of folks who just want to be in an environment like ours. They love giving back to younger folks. So uh, we have a system that if, if you have an entrepreneurial leaning to you and an idea, uh, we have an ecosystem that can help you. Go to that. Uh, and then I just thought of one more question, and then we'll end with this uh, for your section this evening. Um, talk about uh, study abroad options. Oh, yeah. uh, that's a big part of the identity of the university. Mm -hmm. We've already mentioned Dingle, Ireland, and Luxembourg, which are our two own campuses. Yep. Uh, but I know that we also have a program in uh, China mm -hmm. as well, um, yep. and a few others. Uh, can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah, um, this is something that's uh, uh, special to me. Uh, personally, I lived abroad for 10 years. So I know the value of, you know, being outside of your home culture and global the education, the changes that it can uh, give you. You know, you will, whether it's ten years like myself or just two weeks, uh, you will come home a changed person for the better, and you're going to be more valuable to an organization because of it. And I think that's the ultimate reason why we do it as a business school. We're looking to create people who are valuable to organizations, and these are the experiences that do that. Yeah, we, we have not only the permanent campuses in Ireland and on the continent in Luxembourg, but we also have shorter term programs. Uh, we just in January sent a half a dozen folks to India. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, uh, programs in China. Uh, we actually have um, a big summer program that uh, brings people here to campus, and part of that is to exchange back later in the year. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of experiences uh, ready to be had uh, for studying abroad, whether it's a full semester, two weeks, all over the world really. All right. Uh, Dr. Michael Frechette from the Walsh College of Business Technology, thank you for being thank here. Thank you, Rob. Right. See you again. Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, wrap up tonight with talking about the second half of the business and technology college that we've been talking about. And one of the rapidly growing areas of academics on our campus is the School of Computer Science and Engineering. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Togo Kaya, who is going to be coming in here. Uh, how are you tonight? I'm very good, thank you. He's got his t-shirt on. He's ready to go, representing SHU Engineering. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, and I know that this has uh, really been an exciting time for you over the last few years since you came to Sacred Heart. Um, in building up, helping to build up the School of Computer Science and Engineering, more specifically for you on the engineering side. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the overview of the entire school uh, and uh, what the uh, experience is for our students there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so School of Computer Science and Engineering uh, has uh, the computer science programs in information technology, game design, cybersecurity, and uh, engineering programs, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, the programs are uh, very well uh, merged um, and uh, a lot of uh, classes in the first year are common. So students come in uh, and then they can uh, explore different ways of uh, technology mm -hmm. um, and programming and engineering aspects and okay. design aspects. Uh, so we are very lucky also to be uh, under the College of Business and Technology uh, where we are able to interact with the business side um, and with other classes and other uh, students uh, and professors. So it helps us um, become not just like a technological uh, experts, but at the same time with the business mind. So let's talk about the, uh, first let's talk about engineering. So we host two, currently two engineering programs on campus, uh, computer engineering and electrical engineering. So That's talk correct. about what students are doing in their preparation as an undergrad in those programs. Yeah, so we started computer engineering uh, three years ago and we started electrical engineering last year. Mm -hmm. So we are a very new program, uh, but we are growing. Uh, we have a very strong ties uh, with our industry. So we have uh, lots of uh, company partners uh, already uh, who, are, who cannot wait uh, for our graduates. Yes. Uh, so we are very excited for that. Um, and our programs, as soon as they come on campus, uh, they will be uh, basically uh, hugged by uh, our uh, other sophomore and uh, uh, and junior uh, engineering students in our lab, uh, we call it IDEA Lab, Innovate, Design, Engineer, and Apply. Okay. So with, uh, with this uh, lab, uh, just 11,000 square feet, I, I worked in several engineering labs in big schools, and this is, I haven't lived in a, in a space like this yeah. before, so I'm very excited. Yeah, so the IDEA Lab, which just uh, was rebranded this past semester, uh, opened up in January, um, and it provides a, um, a working space uh, for students, um, not just in engineering, uh, not just in computer science, but it's transdisciplinary in effect, right? So that uh, programmers all over the campus are able to use it. 
That's right, that's right. So we, uh, I'm glad you, you picked on the, the word that transdisciplinary. <laughs> so we, we actually were playing with the words interdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary, but transdisciplinary is really what we are doing because uh, in, in the current world, it's really um, disciplines are not that specific anymore. So you are you're playing the role of engineer, but sometimes you're playing the, the role of a different field. Uh, so we are working with you know, fashion marketing uh, on, on our classes and their classes, exercise science, uh, philosophy, uh, the literature classes, they, they hold their classes in our space, they interact with our students. So the space is, is really uh, a place for people to interact and uh, bring their uh, creativity. And we have uh, fantastic equipment in there, uh, including multiple 3D printers, a uh, manufacturing area, a wood shop area, uh, and a working space which doubles as a classroom space. But it's not really a classroom because they're really doing hands-on activities, correct? That's right. That's okay. right. So yeah, our classes are mo uh, mostly hands-on. So we, we do things first and then we cover the uh, theory with, with it. So pretty much every engineering classes and also computer science uh, classes are hands-on. Uh, you, you interact with the, the professor and also students. One of the things that you added this past year uh, for the School of Computer Science and Engineering was the exploration course coming in as a freshman. Can you talk a little bit about that, that students within these disciplines will be able to do? Absolutely. So uh, when, uh, when students come into uh, our programs, every uh, freshman of computer science and engineering students, they take one class, uh, particularly that's called uh, computer science and engineering explorations, and they rotate between different uh, areas. So engineering, cybersecurity, game design, and computer science and IT. So that way, they actually get to see all different fields what they do, uh, so we uh, uh, meet them a couple weeks uh, in, um, uh, in different rotations. So that way, they have a better understanding of which programs that they that would be fit for them, and also they can consider some minors in other disciplines. Okay, and then let's talk about the other side outside of engineering, and that's computer science. And within computer science, we have computer science as a major. We have uh, cybersecurity, information technology, and game design and development. Yes. So talk a little bit about those programs. So uh, all these programs, uh, we, we had actually a computer science as, as one program uh, in the past, and then there, there were concentrations. But right now, we have all their own uh, programs, computer science, IT, information technology, and game design, mm -hmm. and we added cybersecurity. Um, so the, all these programs, uh, the, the first year is a common uh, programming classes, but then you specialize in uh, different aspects of the programs. So very, uh, very well-established programs, um, we have hundreds of um, alumni in the, the 50 mile radius area. Uh, so we get to interact with them. They come to our classes as guest speakers. Yep. And we also have, uh, in uh, most of those programs, we have a graduate component. So That's graduate right. in, in computer science, cybersecurity, information technology, all have those abilities to do a graduate program within that. Discipline. That's right. correct. That's right. Um, a couple questions I want to get to, because you have a lot of questions coming in now sure. uh, about, uh, can you talk, I'm not sure if you know about this. If not, we can direct them to the website, which is fine. Do you know what programming language is used for the game design major? So we are uh, we are using a, a, well, Python is our programming Python, language, yeah, Python, okay, yep. uh, but uh, we are using as a software we're using Unity right now. Okay. okay. Uh, for um, game design majors, uh, what uh, opportunities are for internships? Oh, so that is uh, that is plenty. So there is a lot of uh, uh, design aspects uh, to it. So uh, lots of uh, developers uh, looking for interns. Uh, we have lots of opportunities on campus because our game design program actually uh, is a nationally ranked program. So we get a lot of contracts uh, to do uh, games. Yeah. Uh, so they actually, uh, lots of our game design majors actually uh, intern at least one time in our campus. Okay. Uh, could you give just a, a little bit of a longer talk on cybersecurity and what it, uh, students would be doing here at the undergraduate, undergraduate level? Sure, undergraduate level. Yes. Right? Uh, so cybersecurity program we started a few years ago with the, basically the responding to the demand. So currently in Connecticut and this area, there is not enough graduates to fill the cybersecurity positions. We cannot graduate enough cybersecurity majors. We need more cybersecurity majors. We need more cybersecurity, yeah. uh, yes, de definitely, definitely. And the program uh, is growing. Uh, we have a great uh, director for the program and several um, uh, uh, cybersecurity professionals come and teach for that class, mm -hmm. um, they, uh, so that is a great program. Okay. And we just established it, we just uh, built a new uh, lab for that. Yes, so a new lab over at yeah. West Campus for that's cybersecurity. Right, that's right. It has massive monitors, the biggest monitors I've ever seen before. That's right. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, internship opportunities for electrical engineering? Sure. Uh, so, uh, Connecticut is an advanced manufacturing 
uh, there's a lot of dust manufacturing uh, companies, lots of uh, the government contracts, mm -hmm. um, so uh, lots of big companies. Um, so the hardware, not just the hardware, but also software. Um, so I can I can uh, uh, rightly say that there's 50 miles or 60 miles radius. There's so many internship opportunities um, within this area. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about the um, AI lab, the artificial intelligence lab uh, that's over uh, on, in West Campus? Sure, sure. Uh, we established that artificial intelligence lab uh, last year as well. So these are uh, the very uh, high performance computers, uh, but at the same time we also have the uh, Amazon uh, cloud services. Okay. Uh, so we work with AWS. And so you can uh, create your uh, program and practice AI on the computers, uh, uh, hardcore computers, or use the servers, uh, or also go to the cloud. So we have all aspects of it uh, for the cloud computing uh, and uh, machine learning. Uh, and then the last thing I'm gonna leave you with, because it's one of the things that I love about the engineering program, talk about our uh, students' experience with drones here on campus. I thought you were going you were gonna ask that. I was gonna <laughs> I say I need to ask I wasn't that. Gonna let you you get need off to ask that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm very passionate and uh, almost obsessed with the drones. Um, so uh, we actually have the world's best uh, uh, autonomous uh, vehicle uh, research studio that is used for teaching. Mm -hmm. So usually they, these are research facilities, but this is for for teaching students in freshman year. They start learning about the drones. Um, I, I'm obsessed with drones, I say that because I really believe the, the platform of it, uh, that you can teach a lot of things, uh, the, the coding, multi the hardware, multi-dimensional, yeah. so I'm very excited, I'm, I'm uh, one of the uh, highest level uh, drone uh, Operator. operators. Oh, very, yeah. All right. You're getting expert uh, service when you come here to Sacred Heart to, to use the drones. That's right. So, uh, representing the School of Computer Science and Engineering this evening, uh, Dr. Tova Kaya, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're welcome. All right. You're welcome. I'm going to bring Pam Pillow back up from uh, the Office of Undergraduate Admissions so we can begin to wrap up our evening. I know this was a lot of information. Uh, we went through all the major uh, cohorts within the uh, College of Business and Technology. We certainly appreciate you being with us. Like I said, we had a lot of questions. Not all of them would have been answered tonight, but we are going to try to get you all those answers in the coming days. We're also going to be providing you um, links for virtual tours of our campus, as well as the West Campus, which is housing uh, currently the school, uh, the school of Computer Science and Engineering and the Walsh College of Business and Technology. Uh, just a couple of things for those of you who are um, getting ready to make that decision about becoming a pioneer. Uh, if you are ready to deposit, uh, you can do that on our website at sacredheart.edu slash deposit. We'd love to see you at orientation, which happens uh, in June this year. Uh, we also are inviting you to be on part of our Facebook group. If you have not joined the Facebook group for the mid class of 2024, make sure you search that. For those parents who are trying to sneak in there, it's only for students, so we will check and make sure that uh, we are keeping you well away from that. Uh, and then um, we want you to be on the admitted student uh, website, That's correct. which is welcome.sacredheart.edu. Uh, once again, welcome.sacredheart.edu. Any closing thoughts? Just to extend my sincere congratulations to all of you and your families. Um, thank you for joining us this evening, and we do hope to see you soon on campus. Uh, from all of us here at Sacred Heart University, from Dean Martha Crawford, from the College of Business and Technology, from our president, Dr. John Patillo, Pam Pillow, our executive director of admissions, I'm Rob Gilmore. On behalf of the university community, have a wonderful evening. Go Pioneers. <laughs>